Hello, I'm Deanna Cowley. Welcome to Charter Local Edition Northwest. Just in time for the holidays, there's a new book release about a man who helped shape the future of the Tri-Cities, Sam Volpentest. The book is titled Community Godfather, how Sam Volpentest shaped the history of Hanford and the Tri-Cities. Now, whether you agreed with him or not, there is no denying the mark that he left on Hanford and the community he loved and lived in for 60 years. He was a successful wholesale grocer in Seattle until he moved to the Tri-Cities in 1949. He came seeking opportunity from the emerging economy surrounding the activities at Hanford, all that created the atomic bomb. He opened a successful tavern. He became a civic activist. He was diagnosed with cancer in 1957 and survived and then lived to be 101 years old. Sam passed away in 2005. As a committed community supporter, he used his sales skills and strong political okay. contacts to funnel billions of dollars into Hanford and the Tri-Cities. And he also co-founded what is now called TRIDEC, the Tri-Cities Economic Development Council. His accomplishments include funding for the federal building in downtown Richland, the Fast Flux Test Facility, and the Volpen Test Hammer Education and Training Facility. Sam Volpentest actively promoted the economy and the economic development of this community right up until the end of his life. Now this book was written by C. Mark Smith. He's a Tacoma native and a nationally recognized economic development leader. He retired to pursue his passion for writing and he published his first book back in 2011 called Raising Cain, The Life and the Politics of Former Washington Senator Harry P. Cain. And Mark joins us here today to discuss his second book, Community Godfather. Mark. Thank you for coming. Thank you, Dana, for having me. We really appreciate it. First of all, I want to say I read this book. It was a breeze to read. But more than 400 pages, well written, well researched, and you used a lot of journalism techniques in the book. I was very impressed with the fact that you went back and took so much history from Hanford's turn, uh, Seattle's turn of the century work, um, the Hanford history, the trade out of the contractors, and of course all the economic development here. Why did you put so much of that history in there? Well, you know, it, the, book is a, the book is a biography of Sam Volpentest, but you can't really talk about Sam without uh, talking about the context of the times in which he lived. So when I, when I write, I try to uh, d let the reader uh, see and feel what uh, was going on uh, at that time. So uh, we talk about, you know, Sam was born in 1904. So we so we talk about the Columbia Exhibition and and at in Seattle and uh, and uh, the the Depression and and the and the red, and the first Red Scare at the end of World War One. So these are all things that he grew up with that we don't think very much about today. Well, and if someone is not particularly interested in Sam, this has a lot of good historical information to it, and that really wa opens it up to a much wider audience. Yeah, I, I think so. It would, it would be a little boring if you were just writing about the person, I think. <laughs> and Sam died about a decade ago. What prompted you to write about him now? Um, well, he, he died in 2005. Yeah, you're right. It's almost that long. Um, I had, I like to write about uh, interesting people and, and uh, uh, Sam was certainly an, an interesting person. I, I first met him uh, in 1970 when I was a 31 year old uh, director of the Federal Economic Development Administration and uh, he came in to see me one morning and, and we talked a little bit and he pulled out a, a list of projects he thought I'd like to fund in the Tri-Cities and uh, <laughs> thought you I wasn't, yeah I wasn't <laughs> going to commit to anything and, and we shook hands and he left and and about uh, 20 minutes later my secretary buzzed through and she said uh, it's uh, Senator Magnuson on the telephone himself well I'd never talked to Senator Magnuson and I lifted up the receiver and I said yes sir what can I do for you and he said I understand Sam Volpentest was just in your office and I said yes sir he said give him anything he wants <laughs> <laughs> so that was my introduction <laughs> to Sam Volpentest, and an awful lot of other federal employees had the same introduction. Oh, wow. <laughs> well, you, you mentioned Warren Magnuson and also Scoop Jackson. Sam was close with them. He was very effective at working closely with developing relationships and then delivering dollars. And what do you think was his key to working with this bipartisan group? Well, he, he met... Uh, he, you know, he grew up in he grew up in Seattle in the in the 20s, and uh, like many many other people, uh, was a strong supporter of Franklin Roosevelt in 1932, 
uh, he, was, he, he was active in the Italian club in Seattle. And a lot of local politicians, including a, uh, a budding state senator by the name of Al Rossellini and, and, a, and a prosecuting attorney by the name of Warren Magnuson, uh, used to stop by the Italian club for a drink. Mm -hmm. So Sam, uh, Sam got to know them and, uh, and established friendships. Which, which remained over through the 40s and, and early 50s and everything. And, and he, he, Sam wasn't really particularly political other than, other than the fact that he raised money for his friends. But when he got here and, uh, and, uh, he, and, he, and he found out, he, well, before he had cancer, uh, he was active in the effort to uh, uh, incorporate the city of Richland. And Senator Jackson was interested in that because he was uh, on the Atomic Energy Committee, on the, on the Joint Committee for Atomic Energy. Uh, and uh, he was interested in changing the contractor at Hanford and mm -hmm. letting the, the atomic cities uh, incorporate. So he and Sam got to know each other that way. And Sam already knew Magnuson and Rossellini from the early days. So uh, when they announced that they were going to close down the production reactors at, at Hanford, Sam called uh, Senator Magnuson, and, and uh, Magnuson uh, uh, put Richland at the top of the list to get a federal building so that it would show the local people that there was some permanence here and the community wasn't going to dry up and blow away. Mm -hmm. He had those strong alliances. And one of the things I really appreciated about your book are all these, and this again is another good journalism technique. You used a lot of historic photos with captions. And I love the one of Sam with the young John F. Kennedy. <laughs> You know, so he certainly knew people in high places. And how do you think he effectively extracted money from both sides of the House? <laughs> uh, that's just amazing. We can't seem to get that cooperation in Congress anymore. Well, it, 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 he extracted money from the local business community. Uh, he and then and then he, he used those political contributions. And, and by the way, most of that money came from people who considered themselves to be Republicans. And, and in many of the people I interviewed uh, talked about the treatment uh, Sam uh, gave them when he came to them and asked them for contributions for Democratic politicians, <laughs> and and uh, some of the, some of which are still major businessmen in this community today. And uh, one of them said, I wrote, I wrote a check to Sam, and then I wrote another one, and another one, and another one. And I said, why did you do it? He said, so I would never have to go through that again. <laughs> And, and that, then, okay, that explains it. I and then, Sam, and then, and about then that. Sam took those contributions, and you know the mother's milk of politics is money, and Sam took those contributions, and 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 the politicians starting with Jackson and Magnuson, but going all the way forward to Norm Dix and Patty Murray and Maria Cantwell, uh, appreciated the financial support that this community has given them, and in return, uh, they uh, tried very hard to take care of the community. Now, once I was done reading it, I really picked up of all of his hard work and accomplishments that he was probably most proud of the Hammer facility. But what else do you think really was deeply meaningful to him? Well, a Hammer was important because there, as they started to clean up the Hanford site, it, uh, the cleanup went very poorly for a number for the early number of years, and um, worker morale was bad. Training was was inadequate. Uh, and uh, and there were there were accidents and people were one person was killed and others were hurt. Uh, and those those were people that Sam felt a a personal kinship to. Some of them were had been customers in his tavern, mm -hmm. and and he said you know it's really important that we develop a facility where these people can uh, receive adequate training. And oh, by the way, uh, it's a facility that will bring millions and millions of dollars into the community over a long period of time. Yeah, I covered the opening of that facility many years ago. That's a wonderful asset for the community. And then also, one of the things I thought was very honest about the book was that you talked about the toll this took on his family. And any driven, successful person usually doesn't find the time in the day necessarily to get all the way around all the family activities, but that's very often left out of history. So why did you think that was important to include? Well, I think it's, I, I, I think it's important because uh, people who are successful, uh, oftentimes that success comes at a, with a price. And I don't think you can really 
understand that person uh, by just understanding their successes. I think you have to understand uh, the challenges and conflicts that have gone on in their lives to make themselves successful and, and, and in many cases what their family has done to help them be successful. Mm -hmm. And lastly, some people might look at Sam's life and his works and his successes and passion and say this is brilliant economic development and other people might look at some of these accomplishments and say this is actually why our country is in deep debt right now and so you've studied this out this is your second book how do you reconcile that personally well i'm I, i'm a professional economic developer so so i i i believe uh, very much that uh, jobs and tax base uh, are created because communities uh, have a plan and and they have a vision uh, and they have leaders uh, who act on that planning and that uh, and that vision uh, to implement uh, the plan those plans and visions and make the community uh, a, a place that can grow and create jobs and tax base it doesn't happen uh, without that happening and successful communities have either a Sam Volpen test or several Sam Volpen tests uh, that lead that effort. And communities that don't have successful leaders struggle. Oh, that's true. Mark, thank you for joining us. We sure. really appreciate thank it. Thank you very much. Enjoyed we it. We appreciate you being here and we wish you the best of luck. I'm Dana Cowley. Thanks for watching Charter Local Edition Northwest and have a great day.